Alright, so, um, I kind of made a little mistake in the last attempt I made at this, so, uh, I've got to kind of just start it over. Um, but yeah, uh, so, let's start off, whoops, not with that, um, not that folder, it's in here. So, um, the directory so my directory is going to be different than yours and you're probably going to have yours installed to the default directory which is um c programs 86 um activision and then um call of duty world of war so that's probably going to be your directory if you have it installed to the default um i don't have my game installed to the default but this is where you're going to install your mod tools. So um, I'm not going to cover that part. Um, this is more or less for if you've already got that part done. So um, <clears throat> then we're going to go into um, Ben. And in here, we're going to open Radiant, which I already got open. So uh, this is going to be... Um, basically creating like a small little um is it's going to be kind of a small little tutorial on how to use radiant and how to make stuff in it so um all right this is from my little uh messed up demonstration i did before so uh we're going to start anew and what we're going to do is we're just going to remove this crap backspace now we're gonna start a new okay and then we can remove this thing too because that's not necessary all right so uh, we got back to where I had my starting point um, when I started the last video so uh, What I plan to do here is show you the basics of using Radiant. So to move your camera around uh, in 3D view, you're going to right click and then just drag around. Um, very simple. Um, and then, you know, if you want to move the camera up, down, left, or right while you're, you know, heighten the camera or lower the camera or move it left, you know, kind of strafe it left to right then you would hold control and you can strafe it left to right move it you know all over the place um but yeah i'm gonna set it back like this um <clears throat> also uh if you control shift and right click and move it it'll give you kind of a i guess you'd say like first person you know head tilting kind of view and you can tilt it however you want so like you know say you wanted to look at something in a downward angle you could you know do that um i find that to be kind of rarely useful but it, it is a little useful um so i guess that's kind of it for basic movement um there really ain't much more to say there you know so there's that um let's say uh, you want to create something well like a box or whatever so uh, same thing over here in the 2d view you right click and you just drag this around um, if you wanted to zoom in or out you use the mouse wheel scroll up or down um, same over here if you wanted to move forward and backwards in the 3d view you could scroll up and down with the mouse wheel like I'm doing here and this will bring stuff further and closer to the camera um so yeah you could do that too but over here in the 2d view uh say you want to put a box here or something well you can start drawing it over here and then come over to the 3d view and then line it up where you want it so let's say we wanted to make this like a section of the building or something let's we're going to start off by making a, a little building so let's make a um let's make a building so we'll drag that out to match up with you know the size we want and we'll just pretend that floor is not there but at the same time we're going to use it so um i don't know maybe just ignore what i just said i don't know 
totally up to you. Um, but you'll see right now, the box is kind of useless. Um, because there's no inside texture to it. So if we put our character inside of here and we decided to use this for whatever reason as our box. Um, I don't know if there's collision on the inside. I think you could walk through from the inside to the outside. But then there's collision on the outside and there is texture on the outside. So you wouldn't be able to get back in it. Um, you, you wouldn't want to do this for anything unless it's just like kind of a centerpiece or something like that. It was, it was just meant to be something that's just there and not something that's, you know, part of a building or anything. So, um, our box is a little useless right now, but if we go up here and we click on this little, uh, box icon here, this will hollow it. As you can see, it said hollow up there. So... Now we've got ourselves uh, a box with six walls. We got a floor, a ceiling, and four walls. So uh, we can remove this floor because we're not going to need that, right? So um, <clears throat> now we got our six walls or six surrounding areas, whatever you want to call them. Um, so that'll bring us into our next thing. So uh, let's say we wanted to put a doorway in here. Well, um, what we could do is, you know, click on it, go over here in the 2D view, hold control, and then right click. So we want to draw along the same line. If you want your door to be, you know, lined up, you don't want it to be like all, you know, lopsided. Then you want to make sure you line it up with these lines on the grid. So um, then you would control enter. And then if you want to make another cut, you could do the same thing. Uh, it would be control, uh, right click, and then control enter, and then control, right click, and then control enter. Yeah, it's a little messed up, but it doesn't matter. You'll see we could fix that pretty easily by just doing this. And we could drag that over if we wanted. And then we could do the same here. We could um, bring this up. And then we could just remove this. Um, and, you know, we we want to move this over so we could just do that. You know, kind of center it if you wanted. Um, it, depending on where you want your door, it, it doesn't matter. This is a demonstration, so I'm not trying to do things perfectly here. Um, I'm just trying to give you a general idea of how stuff's going to work. So we're going to select all this stuff. Um, you'll notice here that there's this yellow texture here this is called caulk and basically you can see through it so if you was in game you would be able to see through this wall and it would just look really weird so um to fix that you could you could uh control shift and select the faces like i'm doing here and give it a texture but the problem is we've cut and there's caulk here so if for whatever reason you know your camera went at the right angle or whatever you might actually be able to see through part of the wall because of that um, I don't think it's necessarily something that'll happen but just to be safe what I like to do is select everything that has a cut applied to it and then retexture it so then uh, like let's take a look now now there's no caulking there so <clears throat> nothing will end up being invisible or you won't happen to get a weird camera angle where you can see through part of the wall or something you don't want that um, so now we've made a little doorway and that that was fairly simple and straightforward so um, you know let's say we want to make a door frame we're gonna get into doing something not so it's not really complex but so uh i didn't talk about grids but this is going to be kind of important to this so let's say we start to make a door frame well uh that door frame is going to be jotting out kind of far you don't want it looking like that right so um i don't know what all numbers there are but the default is four so if you hit four you're already on a four grid but it changes the grid over here so let's hit one 
and you'll see the grid looks bigger but what it does is it actually increases the sensitivity to your movement of scaling stuff so you'll end up with something that looks more like you know what you want so there we go that looks more proper for a door frame it's not jotting out of the wall really ridiculously so once you're done with that i recommend resetting it back to four because that's the standard grid for like creating your structures and stuff you could use one two three or whatever you know other grids for you know whatever other things you want to do like for instance this door frame window frames whatever else um uh that it makes sense for but for you know your basic shell of a building structure and all that i would recommend staying in four because it's the easiest to work with for one it gives you a uh, more proper thickness for like your walls and whatnot um and it also uh if you work in like say you do a two grid with something and then you switch back to four at some point or you saved and closed and opened it back up and it went back to the default of four grid and you start working on your map and you try and line everything up it's not going to line up right and then you'll find that you have to work in two grid pretty much the rest of the way through if you want things to line up properly so um just stay in four grid for the most part and only do like two grid if you really have to um that's my recommendation um then to copy things, you hit spacebar, so have it selected and hit spacebar, and you've copied it. Now we could drag the size of this down, and then we can make the side door frames, you know, for the sides of the door. <clears throat> and then, you know, we could copy again, again, spacebar, and then there you go. We've got our little door frame set up here. And as you can see, it's all lined up. Let's just change the texture to make it, you know, um, look a little better. Actually, we'll leave that and we'll change this texture. And we'll change all of these as well. That way, it makes a little more sense. We'll, we'll do that. Or no, we'll do that. That kind of looks a little better. And then for this, we'll do something like that and don't worry about that little nonsense there um, that is fixable um, you could downsize this to fit inside of the box to fix that so you don't see like glitching textures or whatever because it's basically a texture trying to show through another texture you could do that if you want um, depending on what you're doing it i don't think it's going to matter too much you're hardly going to be looking around the map and looking at the clo closely at details anyway uh when you're playing but while you're mapping that might be a little annoying so you know you could do something like that and it would be fine and then you know it'd still be flat so you won't see the glitching um <clears throat> so we've got simple stuff like that out of the way um let's say we wanted to make i don't know like um what did i want to move on to next um that's the question what do i want to move on to next we got uh our basic controls down we got basic cutting we got basic manipulation we got you know basic uh grids and stuff like that so let's create something here create a little piece of uh ground and we'll just line it up here it's not going to matter for this little section of the demonstration but let's uh do that and let's say we wanted to make this um curved so we could go to patch and then go down to simple curve patch and then we can make like we could do like 11 by 11 that should be enough um uh um that's another thing it'll disappear um so we could do control z to bring it back to the way it was before uh because of the view we're in we want to be in a top down view like this if we're going to do any kind of patching like terrain or curve patch so we'll do the same thing we did before and that'll fix that 
Um, now this will be lined up with the top of the floor here uh, to our building. Um, and that could be fine because maybe we're going to put like, you know, a terrain patch here or something to make some ground around this or, you know, whatever. Um, but we could also bring this down. But now the problem is, see, it, it's kind of in my uh, floor there. So we're just going to leave it here. Um, again, simple demonstration. Now, with it selected, if you hit V, it'll bring the vertices. So those, uh, those numbers we plugged in are the vertices. So it's 11 across and 11 this way. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You could, you know, you could figure out how many you want, you know, across and width wise. Um, but I typically just stick with the same. So say I do 11 for, you know, width and I do height is 11. That way then I don't have to worry about, oops, I, I did... I wanted the height to be 11 and I wanted, you know, the width to be something else. It doesn't matter because chances are you're only going to mess with uh, whatever vertices you want to mess with anyway. So um, if you hit shift and left click, it'll select a row of vertices. And then if you click again while still holding shift, you can select the opposing vertices. So let's say we wanted to turn this into a curve coming from the house. Well, we would do something like that, something like that, something like that. And then you, as you can see, it's starting to become a kind of uniform curve. And then for like here, maybe we're going to do like that. And there we go. We got a, a fairly decent, you know, little piece of curved, you know, whatever there. You know, sidewalk, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that, that's the basics of that. And again, you could do the same thing here. And then for terrain, you could do like a terrain patch. And then let's say we want to do, we'll do the same thing. We'll just do 11 by 11. It, just keep it simple. Um, now terrain patching is fairly, pretty much the same. Um, it works pretty much the same way. Um, but it doesn't curve. So you'll see what I mean. We're going to try and line this up kind of as close as possible to this point here and then you again you would hit V it brings up the vertices and then um, I didn't mention this with curve because curve you're probably not going to do this too often anyway but you can if you want um, if you left click and highlight one of these vertices and then hit alt you can move just that single vertice however you want so you know say we wanted to line this up to kind of come to the point of um, this curve patch. We could do that if we wanted. So we're not going to, but we could. Um, and then again, you know, if you have uh, your vertices selected, you can, you know, shift and then click and it'll do the same kind of thing. You can move all the vertices at once along that axis. But the problem with that is you're still going to have to come back. Say you want all these to be raised. Well, you don't want there to be a hole in your map. So you're going to want to have to do this and then drag this back down to line up where you want it. And then you'll have another little problem here. You'll have one vertice will be kind of on an angle here while the other one just is lined up with the rest. Um, so you're more than likely going to want to select your vertices and like, you know, kind of just more or less, this is tedious, but you're going to want to individually manipulate them where you want them. You know, I recommend changing your grid for doing something like this so you could get a more precise um, 
you know, shape for whatever you're trying to make. Um, but I'm doing this in a four grid, so it's going to look very, very primitive. Um, but yeah, you know, say you wanted to make like a little hill or rocky kind of looking side and you're just going to use like a, a rock type texture to make it look like it's just a bunch of rocks you could totally do that with just a curve patch or a terrain patch i mean <clears throat> and like i said you know say we wanted to bring this over to match up with the curve patch we could you know drag this over till it's you know relatively around where that point is um now this probably ain't gonna line up perfectly but you can make it line up perfectly with enough patience so you could do like that and you know you could drag this down to where it lines up more with the corner uh which would be something like that and then you can you know kind of line this up how you want actually i think yeah, it looks like it's going to need to be that, like that. Um, and see, this is where the problem with working in a four grid on this is. As you can see, you're not going to get things to line up the way you want. Um, even if you try and use the same amount of vertices for your terrain patch as you do your um, curve patch. Because it's not going to line up right. You can kind of overlap them if you want. That doesn't that that's totally up to you. It doesn't matter. Um, you could do that. That would be fine. Or you could put something like a kind of barrier in between the two. Like maybe you know, say you're making like a uh, you know, not really a sidewalk, but like a curb or something. You could put like a curb there or something. Just you know, whatever you wanted to do. Um, but see, this is where, you know, going into like a one grid would be more useful. But for demonstration, I'm just going to let this fly like this. So you could kind of get an idea of uh, how this is working. And you could see already that this is very tedious if you want things to look pretty by the time it's said and done. You're going to have to sit here and tinker with this and get it where you want it. And get irritated that it don't look right until you get it to look right. So... Um, yeah, you'll have to just kind of take your time to make things look right. Now, I mean, I, I have no intention of, you know, making this beautiful. This isn't the point of this. This is just to kind of demonstrate, um, <clears throat> what, uh, you could do. So now we've covered terrain and all that. So. We've got our little sidewalk. We've got our little terrain. You know, we could turn this into grass if we wanted. And then, you know, you could see it's glitching out because it's not lined up properly at all. Um, and stuff's overlapping. But, you know, it's all fine. It's all cool here because we don't care right now. Um, so, uh, we got that taken care of. Let's see, what else did I want to cover? I know there was some stuff that I was forgetting that I wanted to bring up the last time. Oh yeah, uh, for textures, by the way. If you want to bring up all the textures, you go to this texture thing and just hit show all. And then all the textures that are within the game will show up down here, so you have more options to select from than just the ones that are in use. Um, <clears throat> so yeah there's there's that um let's see clipping so you create something like this right um so like some of these objects let, let me start here let me start with that first some of these objects here like this this one i'm pretty sure has collision on it but some objects don't have collision you can just walk right through them so, to be safe, even if you know that it has collision, the best thing to do is to make a clip. So, then you can't walk through it, or the zombies can't walk through it, or basically nobody can walk through it. So, um, basically you do the same thing you was doing before. You just create a box. You don't have to do anything fancy to this box. Um, and then you want to, like, kind of line it up with the object, and you want to, you know... 
make it kind of as uniform as possible. You can go into a one grid and get it like perfectly lined up, whatever. Um, and then in the textures, you'll find somewhere, I think it's down towards the bottom. I don't remember where it's at. Um, hmm. Let's see, where is it at, as a matter of fact? Like, you'll see stuff like this. Um, I don't know where all of them are. Hold on, I'm going to bring this up and make it bigger so I can spot them easier. Um, but there's one called clip. It's a red one and it'll say clip all over it. That's the one you want. It might actually be up here at the top because I think I had it in use. Actually, as a matter of fact, I know I used it before. So let's see, um, textures and in use. So there we go. Clip right here and there we go. Now in radiant, it'll show up with this little red box and it'll say clip all over it. But in game, you won't see this at all. It'll be completely invisible. All it is is basically just an invisible box that has collision that prevents you from being able to walk through objects. That's really all it does. Um, you could also say like, okay, well, you're not done making the map and you don't want, you know, or you are done making the map and you want to create a way that people can't go out of bounds so you just want an invisible wall you could you know do something like this you could kind of do the same thing you did with the box um, to make the building you could just put a clip here and then hollow that clip and there you go you got yourself um, invisible collision all over the place so you know maybe you don't want the one on the bottom maybe you just want it to be where you can't get out of bounds you know even if it's kind of like this um if you was like i don't uh if you was like laying down you're not going to be able to crawl under it uh, so even if it was a little bit off the ground it would be okay um so yeah there's that too um <clears throat> But yeah, you could use this for all kinds of things, you know, like, you know, say you want to make it linear and you don't want people going, you know, past a certain point because you just didn't bother making anything in the background to make it look pretty from a distance or whatever. Or you just don't want them falling off the map. Like, say you just made something like this big square here, you know, and that was the limits of the round of uh, your ground. You could let them walk all the way to the edge if you want, or you could put a clip somewhere within the boundaries you know like of this big square you know and that would prevent them from being able to get past a certain point so they can't just walk off the map and get stuck in limbo down below because what will happen if you fall off of one of these maps like say I walked over here and I was able to get off you know and I just walked over this edge you'll still live and you will keep falling because there is nothing that, you know, there's nothing that will kill you. There's no kill plane or anything. So what will happen is you'll fall to a limbo kind of state. And there is a point where you'll stop falling. But you'll be stuck there. You won't be able to do anything but move your camera around and maybe shoot your gun till you're out of ammo. And uh, eventually you will slowly take damage and then eventually slowly die. So, yeah. Um, you don't want that happening either. Um, you could probably program a way to keep that from happening. Like, say you decided, oh, well, I'm just going to leave the map open and let people walk off the edge. You could probably program a trigger or something underneath to, you know, oh, well, hey, you know, this person hit this trigger, so, you know, put them back on the map. You could do something like that, but why bother doing all that when you could just stop them from doing it completely without having to do any extra scripting? there you go so um there's also different kinds of clips too there's like clips that bullets can't go through and ones that zombies can't go through or players can't go through there's all kinds of different clips but um this one here you could shoot outside of so like say i shot a bullet from inside of this clip i can't walk through it but my bullets will still be able to go through it so, you know, say you wanted to stop the bullets, then you would want to put a different clip on the outside of this one. 
But you're probably not going to be worried about that. Just let the bullets fly in infinite space. It doesn't matter. Um, it's not going to affect anything anyway. So there, I don't see a point in doing that. Um, <clears throat> unless, of course, like, you know, you were shooting at this object and this object didn't have collision. Well, you want the bullets to stop. Um, usually, though, this is another thing to keep in mind, though. For something like this, you wouldn't want to do that anyway because typically you wouldn't have to. So say this this object didn't have collision. Usually, even if it doesn't have collision that you know you can't that makes it to where you can walk through it. So say as and no collision, you can walk through it. It still has collision to where if your bullets hit it, it'll like tink off of it or make a sound effect or something like that. There is still some basic collision, but. It is just, it's not collision with other objects, I guess you could say. Um, it's only collision with, like, certain objects, like bullets and stuff like that. Um, why that is, I really don't know. I couldn't tell you, but... Um, I guess that was a shitty example, but point being, there is, you know, ones that are for bullets. There's this thing, too. This is a light grid volume. Um, <clears throat> we'll probably cover that later. Um... You, you need lights first of all so we'll actually do that now like let's put a light in here and it'll show up like this um so you know this is going to be an important part of a map so i might as well demonstrate it anyway so you bring your light in here and you can kind of see you know how the light's gonna you know emanate and where it's going to come from and all that stuff and you could put like two of them in here yeah, this is a small little room. It don't need to be real extravagant with light. So, um, there's that. You can hit N on the keyboard, and uh, you could change the light intensity if you want it to be brighter. Uh, you could change the light radius if you want the light to span out further. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's up to you. Uh, but what you would use uh, the light grid volume for is when you create... Like, say you create a box like this. Um, let's make this box line up with this box. Sometimes a 2D grid's useful. Most of the time I use 3D, though. The, the 3D uh, area. So, you would really, ideally, you want this to line up to the outside of the box. But most of the time I do this on the inside, so it reflects off of the, just the walls. Um because it's not like the light's going to go through the wall anyway. Uh, but you would do that, and then you would hit light grid volume. And then uh, all of where this light is shining at, so this tells it where the borders basically are for the walls, uh, so that it knows to, like, reflect the light or, you know, whatever, um, diffuse it or whatever it wants to do with the light. So, uh, in this case, you know, because this is stone, it would probably be more diffuse than it would be reflective. So, then it would, you know, make it shine off the wall, but it would make it shine off the wall properly. So, that, that's basically what that does. Um, then there's other volumes, too. Like, there's, uh, for your zone, there's, um, uh, actually, I could do that this way. Um where is it mm. I forget where the volumes are for that. where is that at oh uh, uh, reflection probes too are kind of useful uh, but I rarely use them uh, I never actually found them to be that useful actually um, oh yeah info so info and then volume and then this is for a zone so this is to say like hey this is one single area that's what this is for so <clears throat> you create one of these and then you give it a name so like you know start zone is always going to be the first one so then it would be start zone um, 
So then you'd put this around, you know, the section that's going to be the zone. So say you're going to have a door here that you have to open to get outside. Well, the zone is going to be inside this building. So you would do basically the same thing we did with the light grid volume. You just line it up with all that, and then that's your zone. Um, you could span it out to the sides if you're going to have zombies on the outside climbing through the windows. Although that's not necessary. Um... As long as you have your path node set up, which we'll get into in a second, um, you know, and your windows set up right, the zombies will just come in. They know that they're part of this zone, so um, as long as there's enough path nodes leading them to where they need to go to get inside of the zone, then they'll just they'll naturally do that. You don't have to worry about them being encompassed in the zone. They can be outside of it. Um, it doesn't really matter they will still work fine so um but yeah this is a zombie so he's already technically in the zone um <clears throat> so then you'd name it and that i'll cover at a later time probably with some scripting stuff because that that will require a little scripting especially once you have more than one zone so like you know say then you open the door you're going to need a zone out here and this will be a different name this zone will be like zone two or whatever, you know, whatever you want to name your zones. You can name them whatever. Um, that is totally up to you. So, you know, I try and keep it simple. You know, I know where my zone, you know, where my zone one is, where my zone two is. I try and keep track of all that. So when I script it, I, I can script it right. And it's, it's not too hard to script that. That's actually one of the easiest things you could script. Um, <clears throat> unless you're doing some really complex shit, you know, then, then maybe it'd be more difficult, but, you know, for basic zoning, it wouldn't, you know, say this is your zone with, you know, um, you could even do something like this, like you could put a zone in a zone, um, and it shouldn't be a problem because this zone will not be triggered and activated until that door is open. So, like I said, that's part of the scripting thing. So, that's, this outside zone will be zone 2. And it will encompass everything on the outside of the building. So, you know. You could alternatively, for something this small too, just not have a second zone. And just leave that zone. <clears throat> and then... All of this would basically be one zone. Uh, you could just span the zone over everything, or you could just leave it in the building, and then when you open the door, you know, technically, technically that's not the way you would do it. You'd want to span it over everything that's going to be your playable area if you're going to make it one zone, but, you know, that's up to you. Unlike Black Ops 3, where if you put the zone like say you put the zone in this building and you wanted to make this just one zone with one door you open the door and that door doesn't need to connect to another zone because you're just going to use one zone for everything you just want to have a door um once you walk outside of the doorway you'll get killed because you're outside of the zone um and the game treats that as you're not supposed to be there um in black ops 3 but in world at war it doesn't do that so, you don't really have to worry about it in World at War. Kind of cool, huh? Uh, also, a difference in Black Ops 3, too. Say, like, you didn't put your door here yet or whatever. So, you have no way of triggering the next zone. So, say I still had that zone here, right? Let's bring that back. So, so this zone's still here, right? And I open it and I don't have this door set up yet so i don't have nothing triggering this zone yet in black ops 3 if you walked outside of this doorway and entered this zone that isn't flagged to uh um isn't flagged yet then what would happen is it would kill you too because you're outside of the zone you're supposed to be in so that's also another difference with black ops 3 but in World at War, once again, that's perfectly okay to do. You can walk into a zone that's not activated yet, and it won't care. It gives little shits about if you're in the, the zone you're supposed to be in or not. It doesn't care. So, 
Um, but Black Ops 3 does care. I found that out the hard way when I was messing with the maps and thought everything was basically the same. But yeah, they made some changes. Um, and one of them is you can't be outside of the zone you're supposed to be in. Or inside of a zone you're not supposed to be in. Because I guess that's their way of mitigating cheating. You know, you going someplace you're not supposed to be yet. Um, so, I mean, that's fine. But, you know, also at the same time, it's a little annoying when you're, like, testing and you don't have everything set up yet. So. <clears throat> but, yeah, there's, so there's clipping, there's volumes, there's light grid volume, um, there's light probes. There's objects. Um, uh, one thing I didn't get to yet was bringing in models. You could do the same thing we did over here, except for instead of going over here and picking something like that, uh, you would go over and you go to misc and then model. And then, you know, if you're not in this menu where it says X model up there, then you go to Call of Duty World at War, go to the raw folder, and then go down and scroll and find the X models folder. And then you just go in here and then here's all the models some of them do not have collision like i've said before and also some of them don't have preview so some of them might not show up in here um most of the, they're probably not going to be models you're going to care about using anyway and if they don't have a preview i recommend just not putting them in your map because they might not show up at all you know the model might just be missing or something i don't know but yeah, um, and if you do like I just did and exit out, this will happen. You'll just get a blank box that represents a model that you didn't place in the map. So you could just delete it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I think that pretty much covers the gist of the basics. Um, I'm not going to show you any of the scripting or setting up zones properly or any of that. I'm just showing you how to create stuff. Um, you know, you got a basic idea, you know, if you wanted to, you could, you know, m make this, make a wall here for whatever fucking reason you wanted, you know, maybe you're Donald Trump and you want to keep the Mexicans out of this side of the building, I don't fucking know, um, but yeah, you could do that if you wanted. <clears throat> so, yeah, there you go, there's... Trump's wall of keep the Mexicans out of that side of the building. Even though it's not that secure because they could still walk around the border this way. But, you know, eh, that's neither here nor there. There you go. Maybe you want bathroom stalls. Maybe you want the kitchen sink to be a pisser. And, you know, you want this guy to have a little privacy over here while he's, uh, you know, stroking his mans or something. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, there you go. You got that too. Um, but, yeah, we're not going to leave that there. I'm probably going to delete all this anyway, especially considering uh, I'll just delete the volume because I don't want it to interfere with the stuff I got going on over here, even though this test map's going to be uh, collapsed and deleted soon anyway as I start creating something over in this general area um, to make an actual map with. I want to leave until I get everything, the map itself structured, I'm not going to be doing any clipping, I'm not going to be doing volumes of any kind, so I'm not going to have to worry about it interfering with my test section of the map, which is for testing scripting stuff, that's literally what that's for. So, all of this stuff that is uh, basically out of bounds here, or, well, in bounds, but, you know, what I mean. All of this stuff here, this is set up for testing. You know, I got path nodes here to set up the zombies. That's something I didn't show. Um, <clears throat> these zombies are all set up to work. So they are functional, but I have them on the roof. So they're not near a path node. So they can't actually get off the roof. They have to be within a certain distance of the path node. Um, so these little purple squares are path nodes. It tells the zombies where they can go. Um, the zombies are kind of stuck up here. I did that for testing when I was testing some scripting. Um, but I wanted the test map to actually be somewhat functional. I wanted zombies to be able to spawn in and run around. But once I got into testing something that took some time, I didn't want zombies chasing me around while I was testing it, so I just put them on the roof. So they can't follow me anywhere. They're basically stuck there because they're not close enough to a path node to move. 
So they'll just stand there and shake their heads like, you know, I don't know. <clears throat> like they're telling you no. But yeah, there's that. So, um, uh, I think one more thing I should show too, since I'm at it, is triggers. So, uh, that's going to be something we'll cover more if I get into scripting or if people actually even want to bother with this stuff um, or learn it. <clears throat> That's going to depend on demand. This right now is just for kind of my own amusement because I don't have really very many subscribers or people watching my channel anyway. So um, it's more or less for my own amusement at this point. So um, what... For triggers, you could basically do the same thing. You can um, texture with this trigger thing. And um, now this could be for whatever you want. This will be something you're going to script. So you would give the trigger a name. You hit the N on the keyboard, bring this up. And because it's a world spawn, that's actually incorrect. So what you would actually want to do is right click over here and then it would be info or not info um, trigger and then um, there's all kinds of these these are all different triggers. So this is trigger once I don't know what that does. I think that basically just means that this can be only triggered once and of course you'd have to script that. Um, there's trigger damage so you can uh the the trigger is triggered when it takes damage so again you all these are gonna have to be scripted so it does what you want it to do when the trigger is triggered so um there's trigger hurt so that would be like say you wanted to put this in here and you wanted you know you didn't want them getting up on top of the table well there's a way to incentivize them not getting up on the table. They could definitely totally get up on the table, but if they do, they will get hurt. So, you know, if they figure out a way to jump up and get up on top of the table, this trigger will inflict damage on them, basically either until they get down or until they die. So that will incentivize them to not get up on the table. If you wanted to do something that dickish, you could do that. Um, basically the same thing just with the other uh, triggers you know trigger trigger uses one of the most common ones used for a lot of things so that would be like um, you know press F to you know buy mystery box that's what you would use for something like that um, although there's already prefabs that have that shit set up for a mystery box and you know basic things that are kind of zombie staples you don't have to worry about doing that manually Unless you're making a custom mystery box, then you would have to do that. But, um, you know, you would be using a trigger used for, like, maybe you wanted to make the character have to push a button to open a, a door or something. Like a garage door, maybe. You know, instead of him using points, you, you want him to have to open a certain amount of doors to get to the garage. And then to be able to get out of the garage, he has to hit a button to, you know, garage door button, open the garage door. You know, then you would use a trigger use. Um, you could use a trigger damage for like, say, you know, like for my song Easter egg. That's what I used. So if I put one of these in here, you know, and say I wanted you to, sh you know, um, <clears throat> damage this radio, and you know the radio starts going off and starts squawking about some bullshit that nobody gives a fuck about. Um, you could just, you know encompass this object in that trigger uh, damage and then if you hit it with a grenade you shoot it you knife it um, anything that inflicts damage on this trigger will activate it so whenever you go to script it you know um, as soon as it's damaged whatever code you put in there that says do this it'll be done after that trigger is damaged well, as long as you scripted it right. Um, it can activate on its own if you don't script it right. Um, so, there would be something like a wait till and then you put in the parentheses trigger, you know. 
Um, I'm not going to get into scripting, but that's a basic gist of how you would do it. That would tell it it has to wait until this trigger has been damaged, and then it goes through the code. Um, you know, and how you code that's totally up to you. But you know, there is. I just wanted to point out there is a possibility that if you put the trigger in there and you script it wrong, or you don't have a wait till trigger or something that tells it to wait until this trigger has been damaged before it proceeds through that block of code, then it'll just activate on its own. It will just activate without damage. Um, so you got to keep that in mind with triggers. Um, <clears throat> for everything else, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, uh, there is one more thing, actually, as a matter of fact. Um, so let, let's say uh, you wanted to make a door, right? Um, you wanted to put a door here, right? Um, you, you can't do this. This is a big, 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 big no-no. You don't just do like, ah, yeah, I'm going to draw this little box here. And, 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 and I'm going to put this box inside of the doorway. And then, you know, this is going to be my door. No. No, 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 no. That's not how you do it. If you do that, you'll fuck your map up. Basically, um, if you try and use this as a door and you script it to where this opens or something, if you uh, come over and you try and buy it for X amount of points or whatever, if you try and script that or you try and... See, it shows up as a world spawn. If you try and change this or do anything to any of this stuff in here that is connected to this world spawn object. Um, when you save the map and you try and reopen it, it'll delete everything out of your map. Like, all the stuff in your map will disappear. Um, and I don't know of a way to fix it other than having a second of your map and backing it up in case you accidentally do that. Uh, I figured that out by boneheadedly just thinking I could do that. No, you don't do it that way. This is how you properly make a door. So, uh, you would go to script and then brush model. And then that creates a brush that is scriptable. And it is not a world spawn object. So you don't have to worry about the issues of your map getting deleted um, from you trying to change uh, values pertaining to this object. So, that's how you would properly make your door. Um, <clears throat> you could put a clip around this too and attach the clip to the door and all that fun stuff. I'm not going to get into that. That may be a later video too, along with scripting. But, um, that's how a lot of people do it, but it's not necessary. Because if you make a script brush model, it already has collision. And, um when you buy the door you're already going to have to make a trigger to purchase the door right so you're going to have a clip and then a trigger around it and then it's going to be really annoying to select these objects if you want to move them so what i do is i just put this here and i just put the trigger you know say you know you're going to be starting here so you're not going to need to activate the trigger from the outside so you put it in front of the door here you know, you can make it the whole size of the door if you want, but I usually make it a little box, like, within a certain range of the door right here. So, that's usually fine. Uh, maybe you can make it the whole width of the door. You don't need to make it the whole height, though. Um, and, you know, make it to where it doesn't jot really far out. You know, you want the trigger to maybe be, you know, like, eh, like, in this range. Yeah, where it's sticking out to where when you're close to it, you can activate it. Um, but what I'm trying to get to is this brush model already has collision. So putting a clip around it and scripting it to remove the door and the clip or fly the door off into, you know, subspace somewhere with the, and the clip as well, it's pointless. Just don't use the clip. You don't need the clip. There's no point to have it because this has collision and you can't just walk through it. And until you uh, attach a trigger to this and you activate the trigger that activates this thing either being deleted or, you know, 
thrown in the subspace or whatever and deleted or whatever you do with it. However you decide to script your door. Um, until that trigger is activated, uh, you're not going to be able to walk through the door. So you're going to be stuck in this room regardless. So it does not matter. Um, there's a time and a place for a clip and uh, that's not the place for a clip. I mean, you could do that if you want. I'm not saying don't, but it's totally a waste of time. So, um, but yeah, that's how you would properly make a door. And that's kind of arguable considering the texture, but, you know, um, you know, go ahead and talk all the shit you want. Let's just show all textures and we'll try and find something that's adequate for a door. Um, there's plenty of them in here. Um, <clears throat> there's one more thing that I'll show. Uh, actually, no. You know what? I won't show it, but I will explain it. So, basically, say you create... You could create another uh, new map. Like, say you save this. You could go under here and create new... Just open new map. And it'll be empty. And say you wanted to create a door that you're going to reuse... That, you know, is the door itself and maybe it has a window in it and all that. And instead of recreating it or copying this door around, you just want to have this door. So, we're going to go ahead and do that actually now that I think about it. So, let's open new map and then copy selection. So now, uh, where the hell is it? Okay, it is nowhere near where the camera is. But now let's uh, let's say we're gonna make this door right. So there's our door. That should be the right size. It, it may be off, but you know whatever. So let's pick a texture we want for the door. Let's you know say we want the door to be you know metal. You know we could leave it wood, but um, yeah we could leave it as wood and just do what we do with it that way but let's see if we could find uh, maybe a metal texture like maybe this one here you know that that looks that, that's supposed to be concrete um, so let's see um, I don't know if we got any metal textures that's kind of adequate for this here we go let's let's do that that'll be our metal okay and we want this to be a door, and we want it to have a window in it, and we want it to be reusable, right? So we could do like I showed you earlier, and we can um, flip this and put it into the perspective where we're seeing the whole square, right? And then we could go down towards the center, and we can make a cut, a cut, keep the pieces, cut, cut, you know, uh, keep the pieces and cut cut again keep the pieces cut cut again keep the pieces and then um so we want the center one to be a window well then we could just change that texture to like you know this cracked glass or whatever and then do like we did there and just correct that so Maybe we want to move this up or something. Well, you know, we already went through this stuff. We don't have to really reinvent the wheel here, but... Um, let's just uh, move that up. Maybe drag that up a little bit. And there we go. You know, say we want to... We'll do this to bring this up. Do the same over here. Bring that up to that corner. And then... Then, if we want, we could, you know, do this. And we can also make the window wider. And then, you know, this is just going to be a simple example. I'm not going to add a little frame around the window or anything like that. But there we go. We got our, we got our door that we want to be able to reuse, right? So 
now we've got our little door that we want to reuse we could uh, save this now um, what you would do is you'd save as and you can save this as uh, prefab so you could do prefabs and then in here um, I don't have my folder anymore because I had to reinstall all my shit and I lost my folder but I had a folder of prefab stuff that I had already made so you could just create a new folder if you want uh, for your own personal pre made prefabs and I'll just call this tray because those are going to be my prefabs um, and then we could open it and put it in here and then we could say uh, metal door or whatever the hell you want to name it uh, and this is how you're going to name stuff typically you're going to want to do like if you're going to have two words and you're going to have a space you always do an under slash um, because the game doesn't really for scripting and a lot of other reasons stuff inside of the game like the name of your model you would never put a space the game does not like that so um, it's always going to be under slash and there we go so now we got our prefab and we could go back to our map if we wanted to we can uh, go back to map source and then we can open up um, our map and then let's go over here and let's um, put our door in so let's just we can right click um, we can go to misc and then go to prefab and it'll take us to the folder with the prefabs and then we could go into my prefab open this door open and then um, this is where we might have some problems like see remember I was talking uh, I talked about this before I don't remember if I covered it in this video but when you bring an object into the world um, some models have this problem too but this box controls moving that object if you click on the object uh, it won't move it this box actually handles that so um, what you want to do is you want to oh shit um, I actually want to change the view and there we go so um, it's gonna make a liar out of me you can click on the object I guess uh, with models that doesn't seem to be the case but with I guess my prefabs you can do that but you could see the boxes not you know lined up with the object so you know yeah there's that but there we go we've got our door and now we could just you know we could copy and paste this door all over but if we wanted to make modifications to it later um, <clears throat> And not have to worry about reconstructing the door, copying and pasting every piece of the door everywhere. Now it's all one object. So, you know, putting it in a prefab is an easy way of making something that's reusable without having to, you know, create all these pieces over again. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel now. You know, you got it all as one piece. So the glass, the door, the whole thing. You know, you could still see where all the cuts were. And, um, say I selected these, I can merge this into one piece. I can, these ones would just be like that. And I can merge these into one piece. And then it would all be, you know, it would be less cuts and less pieces. But that doesn't matter. Um, and it's all one solid object anyway. So even though you could see where the cuts were, that doesn't, that matters very little. Because in game, you're not going to notice that. Um, you, if you paid really close attention, you may at some point, if you look at it at a very pro, like right angle, you might actually see a little, uh, black line glitching where you could see where the cut was. But for the most part, unless you're really looking for it, you're not going to see it. So it's not important, but that would be a better way of making like your door that way then you you have a standard door for you know your door frame you could just copy your door frame around you could even do the same thing with the door frame you can make it a prefab to match up with your door and then um all you have to do is make cuts to whatever little building structures you make and just slap them in there same thing for windows you can create uh a border you know like a window frame or whatever 
and you can put in a prefab and then all you got to do is just make the cuts to the wall that match up with your window frame you know you could you know for instance take your window frame and put it in this wall and because it's going to be sticking out slightly you're going to be able to see it more and then whenever you go over here and you go into the view to see this you'll see oh, okay well here's the outline for my window frame so I'm just gonna cut here 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 and then you know just delete the centerpiece and there you go there's your window so um, yeah very easy um, now this has gone on for quite long enough um, <clears throat> and I covered a, a vast majority of the basics um, uh, I will go over like one more thing. Let's say we wanted to add uh, a weapon or something. Um, you can you can add weapons like this, um, but you don't want to do that. You want to add them as misc and then uh, prefab, and then. There should be zombies mode and there will be weapon upgrade. You see these weapon underscore upgrade. So we'll do the MP40. Um, you're going to want to bring these in uh, and then place them around. Because if you use the weapons that are just weapon, uh, and you try and buy them off the wall or whatever, I'm not sure why they don't work. So that's just... that's that's reasons those are reasons so um but there you go and then this is a, it's a prefab it's already set up the triggers there the price is set so when you walk up to it you know in game you can just buy it off the wall you don't have to do anything else to it that's it it's it's already there you don't have to add the chalk outline the gun and then a trigger to you know set a price and you know tell it basically tell the, the code in the game to give you the gun this is already done for you you don't have to do any work there now if you're adding custom weapons in you will have to do all this stuff but um for the stuff that's already in the game this is already done for you you don't have to do any of that um you could just place it where you want and that's it if you want to be a dick you could put it on the ceiling you know totally up to you um yeah, like, haha, asshole, have fun getting up here to get the gun. You know, you could do that if you want. That's that's fine. It's totally legitimate. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, I covered pretty much all the basics, as much ground as I could cover without, you know, making a whole straight up, let's create a map video where we actually create a whole map. Uh I gave you the basics, I gave you the rundown of everything, um, except for anything that includes scripting or naming of objects and models and, you know, triggers, whatever. Uh, outside of that, I gave you everything you need to know um, for basic map construction, I should say. Um, when it comes to the scripting and stuff that is interactable, I didn't really give you too much of a rundown on that, but maybe in a future video, if there's enough... Uh, if there's enough people interested, if there's enough viewership on it, if, um, if, you know, stuff like that, you know, if you like, you know, good. If you, uh, if you are interested in, if you're new to zombie modding, if you've never done it and you're interested in doing it, um, you know, especially the, if that, leave a comment, you know, if you need help, comment on the video, I'll try and help you it's not the best place to to uh get help is in the youtube comment but um if i get enough people you know interested in doing it maybe even enough noobs i'll, I'll train you up you know watch this video on basic construction get your mod tools installed um if you don't have them installed find a video online that teaches you how to install the mod tools for your uh call of duty world at war um get familiar with that with setting all that up and then come watch this video on how to do the construction or watch somebody else's if you want it doesn't matter to me but i feel like i put time into this so you know if you did watch it come back to it at least and and
try and learn something from me if you if if you come across this and go watch another tutorial to install the mod tools um, at least be generous enough to come back to where you started um, but again I'm not forcing you there's no gun in your head or nothing um, so uh, so let's uh, I'm gonna say if there's enough interest I'll make more um, if you like it great um if you need help i'll try and help you um uh i may leave a link to my discord uh i rarely use it i usually use it to go on and talk to people in different discord servers for either help or you know whatever about different things old game systems you know scripting other you know keep up with you know game projects that i know are going on or whatever Stuff like that. Um, I rarely ever use it though. But I may leave a link to that for the people who are interested to um, get on there and uh, chat about it. Um, and if if you are interested enough and you really are uh, truly interested in learning, I will be more than happy to get on voice chats and uh, help you... Um, as best as I can try to explain things as best as I can um, I'd be more than happy to do voice chats and maybe cooperatively work on stuff together if you if if you want to or you know maybe try and walk you through while you're doing stuff on how to do things um, I will try and make a video on scripting and you know basic object manipulation and stuff like that like basically like zoning uh, scripting you know uh, doors and stuff like that to to uh, open and trigger another zone and all that stuff um, so that'll probably be coming in the future I also have plans of making a video on downgrading GTA 4 from the complete edition on Steam to uh, I believe it's 1.7 or 1.07 or something like that I can't remember which version but the version that was basically uh, Windows Live version. Um, so you don't have to deal with the Rockstar's launcher or um, any of that crap. Um, multiplayer is pretty much dead, so it's not hindering anything. And that also gives you the ability to have your save files local on your computer hard drive instead of them being basically on a server that you have to connect to through Rockstar to even play your game. So, um, also, the big, big thing with that is uh, modability. If you want to use any of the mods, especially the popular ones, the ones that have been around for a long time, um, that version of the complete edition, a lot of the mods end up breaking. So, you know, not all of them, but a good bit of them break. Or they'll cause crashing or something. So, <clears throat> or if they work, they might not work right. So there's that too. Um, but it, it helps with if you like to do cosmetic mods. If you want to cheat, that's totally up to you. But I don't do that. I just do cosmetic mods and, you know, kind of whimsical fun mods. Um, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that, that I plan on doing sometime here in the future. Uh, I actually got to go through the process and see how to go about it because I've never done it. Um, I want to actually test everything before I bring a video or before I bring myself on a video displaying it so that I can make sure I get every nook and cranny down because it's more involved than just downgrading like Vice City, which is like pretty much two clicks. It's like EggerSnyder.com, one click that quick, you know, you just drag and drop everything into a folder and you're done, you know, it's not going to be like that with GTA 4 because, um, I know whenever I used the disk version of GTA 4 before um, they got off Windows Live and switched over to um, whatever other method of online they had before uh, getting to the point that they use Rockstar Launcher now. Um, I remember that I did some shit to get the game to work without having to connect to Windows Live because Windows Live servers went down and it was just acting up. 
So the game basically wouldn't even... It would launch, but it would basically say, well, fuck you, you can't play your game. So um, I have to figure out what I did, but I was able to remove Windows Live and get the game to work without Windows Live. Uh, I, I had to remove a script somewhere. But yeah, that pretty much fixed it. With that script being gone, it just ignored the fact that it was a Windows Live game and didn't even try and do anything pertaining to Windows Live. It would just load my save file off my hard drive. It wouldn't try and log in the games for Windows Live, which was kind of annoying because when Windows Live went down, what would happen is it would pop up the box to tell you to log into your like Windows Live gaming account or whatever, and then it would try and connect if you did try and log in, and it would fail, and then it would make you do it again. And if you tried to exit and just skip it, it would just bring that box back up again and again and again, and you would never get in the game. It would just be an annoying process. So I figured out a way to completely remove Windows Live and make it work. So I plan on trying to figure out how I did that again, but I did that quite a few years ago, so um, it's going to be some trial and error. But yeah, if you like it, if there's enough demand... I'll put a Discord server link inside of the description for that. Um, for anybody who's interested in trying to message me and talk to me about um, map making. Um, more or less people who are trying to get into it. People who are more advanced and more skilled than me. I don't see a point, you know, unless you want to help with making a map. Or helping me complete a map. Which I have a few ideas for, but... Um, you know, the map making portion I'd probably have to do myself because the ideas are in my head. I don't have them on paper. I don't have a drawn out like plan on paper. This is what the map's going to look like. So I can't just send it to you and say, hey, you know, um, I got this section complete, complete this section. And I'll slap it together with this section. There's, you know, there is going to be none of that. It would be more like maybe I need some help with scripting something I've never scripted before. Or maybe, maybe we want to just compare maps or something like that who knows um but people who are more advanced that's, that's probably not going to be of any use to you but for people who are trying to get into it who's never done it before or who are just interested in learning trying to get trying to see if i could bring the community is not dead but i'm trying to bring it more to life so um if anybody's interested, you know, maybe we could co-op working on a map. Maybe we can work on a, a kind of idea cooperatively. And then I could just work on my own maps in the background. Um, <clears throat> I'll try and help you with scripting. Um, depending on what you're trying to script, I might not be able to help you. Um, but I'll try my best. Um, uh, when it comes to map building, I'm pretty decent at it. I got a very very good decent idea of how to do things there's some things i'm not really good with um but uh for the most part i could help you out with you know building your map and maybe getting your zones to work properly whatever whatever kind of stuff you need like that the basic stuff that you're gonna you know um you know the basic ingredients to the recipe you're going to need to create the pie you know i, I could help you with that but when it comes to super advanced things like porting in custom models, I, I haven't deviled into that yet because I wanted to get good at scripting and map making first. Um, before I got involved in trying to bring in custom models and custom animations and maybe even custom particle effects and stuff like that. And I don't want to get into that until I, I'm good enough at this. And I feel like I'm reaching that point. I've reached that point. Um... I just have to get everything I need to start working with the other stuff and actually practice it. So then I could actually say definitively, yeah, I could help you with that. Uh, right now I can't. So uh, maybe if you're more advanced than me and you want to help me with that, uh, you could go to the Discord server then and uh, maybe help me out with that. Or, or help other people out with that even. Uh, not just me, but other people too. Um, so yeah, I don't have much of a community following. I don't have many followers on, uh, 
uh, on uh, YouTube. So, you know, if you see this video, great. If you want to get buddies involved in, in messing with this, great. If you want to get on Discord and start help me get a community because I really don't have anybody that, that chats on there anyway with me. Um, other than when I go on the different Discord servers to ask for help for things, you know, that aren't related to this, um, then great, you can you can join me there, and then we'll uh, we'll start making zombies maps together, and maybe I could get people who actually are interested in trying out my maps when they're done, because I really, honestly, outside of just making them for my own amusement, my own fun, I have nobody to really try. Uh, test my maps out and play them and see if they even like them so you know kind of been a little bit of a lack of motivation on actually getting one fully completed anyway so if i could get people who's interested in it it would be more motivation for me to actually complete one and not just mess around with my scripting like i've been doing and making little test maps that are pointless so um yeah, it would be more motivation for me to complete a full map and get one of my ideas out of my head and into the game. So, uh, yeah, you could help with that too by, by joining the Discord um, and commenting and liking this video and passing it around and getting people to, uh, you know, get involved, you know. Um, so, yeah. But I think that'll do it for me. Um, so, yeah, um, if you made it this far, great. Thanks for watching because this has probably been over an hour long already. Um, and I've rambled on quite a bit here at the end. So, um, yes, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, have a good day, night, whatever you're having right now, uh, whatever time of day it is for you right now. Um, and hopefully I'll see you again. Hopefully you'll subscribe too. But, uh, you know. That's up to you. Um, neither here nor there. I, I, I particularly don't care. I'm not trying to grow my channel to an absorbent, you know, status or anything. Um, more or less, I'm just, you know, doing random things at random times. I, I, put, I, I do all kinds of different things. Sometimes it's Arduino shit. Sometimes it's computer shit. Sometimes it's old gaming console shit. Sometimes it's just, you know bullshit so um you know it the content varies so um keep that in mind too but yeah that's enough for me and i'll see you later